All right, so GPT-5 is finally here, and you've probably already heard a lot about it. You probably would have heard even more about it if you didn't click off the live stream halfway through. I get it, it wasn't exactly the most electrifying presentation. But since it's literally my job to watch these things start to finish, I caught a bunch of stuff most people missed, and it honestly made me rethink what GPT-5 really is. Let's get into it. Alright, so the first thing you need to know about GPT-5 is that it's a unified system, which means it's actually two models in one. It has a smart, efficient model that answers most questions, and a deeper reasoning model, also known as GPT-5 thinking, for harder problems. And then there's a real-time router that quickly decides which to use, based on conversation type, complexity, tool needs, and your explicit intent. This isn't just a simplicity thing either, it's actually one of the biggest reasons GPT-5 feels so different. But we'll come back to that. Now, getting into some of the benchmarks, I have to say, overall, they were pretty underwhelming. I mean, first of all, they couldn't even get their graphs right. But 74.9% on Sweebench Verified, only a 6% increase from 03, not that crazy. 88% on Aider Polyglot, another coding benchmark, Again, this score is likely state-of-the-art, but not exactly a huge increase over the previous state-of-the-art, more so incremental. Now, of course, as I always say, benchmarks never tell the full story. And across the board, this model is definitely state-of-the-art, but not by much, at least not on traditional benchmarks. In fact, Grok 4 still beats it on Humanity's last exam, and even the ARC AGI 2. Where GPT-5 really shines though, is here. Reliability and accuracy. This model is by far the least likely to hallucinate out of any of OpenAI's previous models, and it's not even close. It's also much less likely to make mistakes, especially when it's in thinking mode. And naturally, it does really well on Healthbench, where it has to handle complex medical questions. It actually gets 46.2% on Healthbench hard, which is extremely impressive. This reality and accuracy also shows up on OpenAI's Economically Important Tasks benchmark, where it's supposedly even better than ChatGPT Agent at performing economically valuable knowledge work. Think white-collar jobs. The other area where GPT-5 shines is speed and efficiency. According to OpenAI, GPT-5 with thinking performs better than O3 with 50 to 80% less output tokens across capabilities. So it's actually much faster. And in terms of cost, first of all, there's also a mini and a nano version in the API, as well as a chat version. And they're all priced differently, but generally speaking, very competitive pricing, as you can see. So yeah, if you've been scrolling online, you've probably seen people disappointed, especially after those benchmark numbers. But here's the thing, GPT-5 isn't really built just to top every benchmark. In OpenAI's own words, GPT-5 not only outperforms previous models on benchmarks and answers questions more quickly, but most importantly, is more useful for real-world queries. They've made significant advancements in reducing hallucinations, improving instruction following, and minimizing sycophancy while leveling up GPT-5's performance in three of ChatGPT's most common uses, writing, coding, and health. Sam Altman even says it himself, GPT-5 is the smartest model we've ever done, but the main thing we pushed for is real-world utility and mass accessibility slash affordability. We can release much, much smarter models, and we will, but this is something a billion plus people will benefit from. Now, here's the part that really stands out. GPT-5 isn't just for paid users. It's actually rolling out to everyone, even free-tier ChatGPT users. That's part of what Sam means by accessibility. This is a model designed to be in as many hands as possible. So, remember how we talked about it being a unified model at the very beginning? Well, that's what really makes this model work for everyone. If you're just asking quick questions, it sticks to the fast, efficient brain so it feels snappy and accessible. But if you're building something complex, it switches to the deeper reasoning brain, so you get that extra intelligence when it really counts. It's designed to scale from everyday use all the way up to advanced projects. Now, if you're just dropping in to ask it a quick question though, the leap from GPT-4 to GPT-5 might not blow you away. 
But if you're building something with it, the difference is night and day. When it comes to coding, as we saw, the improvements are clear on paper. But they're even more obvious when you actually use the model. Here's a live demo from OpenAI's presentation that really shows how good GPT-5 is at practical, real-world coding. Check this out. GPT-5 is clearly our best coding model yet. It will help everyone, even those who do not know how to write code, to bring their ideas to life. It just helped me. I, indeed. <laughs> and it will help me right now. So I will try to show you that. I will actually try to build something that I would find useful, uh, which is building a web app for my partner to learn how to speak French so that she can better communicate with my family. So here I have a prompt. I will execute it. It asks exactly what I just said. Um, Please build a web app for my partner to learn French. One thing to note is that GPT-5, just like many of our other models, have a lot, has a lot of diversity in its answers. So what I like doing, especially when you do uh, this type of vibe coding, is to take this message and ask it multiple times to GPT-5, and then you can decide which one you prefer. So I'm going to open a few tabs. I'm just going to paste there. Great. So while it's working on it, uh, let's read through exactly the prompt I wrote. Create a beautiful and highly interactive web app for my partner, an English speaker, uh, to learn French. And then I gave a little bit more details. Um, track her daily progress. Use a highly engaging theme. Oh, it's already working. I'm going to put it on the side for now. Use a highly engaging theme. Include a variety of activities like flashcards and quizzes that she can interact with. And then to make it even more fun for her, uh, I actually asked GPT-5 to embed an educational game, uh, which is based on the old snake game. Uh, but I asked to add this <laughs> French touch to it, which is to uh, replace the, the snake with a mouse and the apples with cheese. And to make sure that it's educational, every time, I know it's complicated, please, please bear with me. Every time, <laughs> every time the mouse will eat a piece of cheese, I asked GPT-5 to voice over a new French word such that my partner can practice her pronunciation. I can see how much you want her to learn. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. Um, great. So GPT-5 is still working on it. Um, it already wrote 230. 40 lines of code, which honestly is much more than what I would have written uh, in that time. And yeah, front end code's super hard. You know, <laughs> you miss a couple things and it just doesn't work. Exactly. Yeah. But the good part is that you don't need to understand any of that right now. Um, <laughs> so we'll just let it through. Maybe we can check uh, the other tabs. Oh. oh, wow. So I can simply press run code. So I'll do that and cross my fingers. Whoa. Oh, nice. nice. I really voilà. <laughs> <laughs> so we have a, a, nice, uh, a nice website. Uh, name is Midnight in Paris. Oh, I Learn love together. that. So romantic. Um, we also see a few tabs, flashcards, quiz, and mouse and cheese, exactly like I asked for. Uh, I will play that. So this says Le Chat, which says uh, the cat, sorry. Le Chat. Well, that's pretty good pronunciation. What does that mean? The cat. Oh. So I can reveal and check if GPT-5 is correct. It is. Um, so if I press next, oh, and I don't know if you saw, I think it actually updated the progress bar, which is exactly what I had asked for. Mm -hmm. Let's check the quiz. Uh, here is the word non, which is no. So if I press on no. it, bien joué, which means congrats. <laughs> and uh, it, updated, it updated the progress bar again. Uh, and let's check the mouse and cheese tab. OK, that seems like a mouse. Here's the cheese. Um, I'm going to try to play it. Uh, I can't promise I'm going to be good at it. OK, seems to be working. La gare. Oh. <laughs> Un café. So, indeed, just when I eat the cheese, Le chat. it gives me a new French word. It's actually super Le complicated, beurre. and I already lost. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, but let's just check a few other tabs just to see what is the type of diversity that GPT-5 can give you. So you can see that not only is what it generates functional, but it's also aesthetically pleasing, controllable, and very elaborate. Sure, you could probably create something similar with other models, especially in an AI IDE like Cursor. But for the model to one-shot this is pretty incredible. And based on some of the other demos and what a lot of developers have been saying, this isn't just a one-off party trick. 
GPT-5 seems to consistently produce clean, production-ready code, with layouts and styling that feel both intentional and personalized. That's why many are calling it the most steerable model OpenAI's ever built. It can take vague instructions and still give you something polished right out of the gate. But at the same time, if you give it precise instructions, it will prioritize those instructions over making it look good, if that makes sense. To be honest, I haven't actually tested it for coding myself yet, but from what people who have have been saying, it seems like this model just works. It just does what you want it to do and makes it look good. So yeah, it's not AGI like some were hoping for, but in terms of real world utility, GPT-5 might be the most impressive AI we've ever seen. And I think the more people use it, the more we'll start to see what it's really capable of. If you've already tried GPT-5, drop your experience in the comments. I'm curious if you noticed the same things I did. And if you enjoyed this breakdown, drop a like, hit subscribe if you're new, and as always, I'll be catching you guys in the next one.